Hey guys. All right, so we are in the booth, uh, getting ready for our first round of primer. That's going to be a polyester primer that's going to go over all our body work. So you can see we got basically our first session of taping here. So we went ahead and did all the rough body work on the car, a couple little dings and dents. Um, got everything sanded out, ready to go. So I got this, basically we're going to have this covered up, whatever we don't want to prime. And this is going to be the first application. I'm going to do polyester primer over just our body work areas. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing all wiped down and ready to go and spot prime all those areas. And then once that's dried, we'll block that down and then we'll do an application of our finished primer over the top of that and then it'll be ready for application of our actual color coats, uh, which will be our sealers, all the way up to our top coat. So stick around, and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. Hey guys, we're all wiped down and taped up, ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna do, like I said, two coats of polyester primer. This is Evercoat uh, Super Build. It's a four to one primer. Uh, it's a polyester base, it's a great product. And I'm using my Air Gunza, my Iwata Air Gunza. It's a 1.8, spraying right around 28 to 30 PSI. So I'm gonna do two coats over my body work, and we'll show you guys what that looks like. Hey guys, we are done with coat number one and we got a little bit of dry time before I put my second coat on. So I want to take a minute to talk about actually uh, priming itself and how important it is to be methodical when you're applying your primer just as much as you would your base coat or your clear coat. So you can see all the areas that I have, I have soft transitions, right, where I stop priming. I left this tape loose, but it's, it's a nice soft overspray line, like around this mirror where it's taped. It's just a little bit of fog of overspray. I don't have a hard tape line. I didn't back tape this right to the edge and prime right to my tape because that's going to end up leaving a line. And even if you sand that line off so it's soft, it'll feel soft, it feels smooth, you will still have a speed bump that once this is cleared, you're going to see that transition. We call it paint chop. You know, it's going to have that little bit of ripple to it, so it'll actually look like a dent. You can actually create dents by improper priming, just by really putting a lot of material on and just kind of letting it go, thinking that you're filling your dent, but you're really, you're not. You're actually creating a dent somewhere else. So coming over from here, I want to talk about like what I have on this spot in the hood, right? There's a little bit of damage here, and it's called reverse priming, right? So my first pass is outside of that dent, right? So I have one coat that I go to the outside. Now my next coat, I'll come in and I'll space this off and I'll spray it to the inside. And then my last coat, if I need to, I'll do a third, but it'll just be over the spot. So what you're doing is reversing the action of feathering out that dent, right? So you have your, your clear coat, your top coat, your base coat. Usually there's a sealer coat and then an E-coat or like a factory primer. So you're kind of creating this, this dip when you feather that out. Even if you're really methodical and you feather that out nice and it's really smooth, you can't feel that transition, you still have high to a low. So you want to reverse that. So you're going to go from the outside and work your way in to fill that back up. It's going to make it a lot easier, A, for you to sand, and, and it's going to make it a lot easier to make that transparent transition in terms of that repair. Uh, and another thing too is you don't want to spray here and then go to the outside and move over because what you're doing is every time you do that now you're spraying, you're, you're painting over your overspray. So you have a graininess, right? This has got a little bit of overspray. Now covering that with more primer is, is not going to help you. It's actually going to create more problems. So you always want to work from the outside to the center. And it also gives you a starting point. You know you're not going to go too far to the point of where you're going to start painting over your tape and creating that paint job again because you're going to have a, a hard line of primer. You always want to try to minimize that, that hard edge so everything feathers in nice and easy. It makes it a lot easier to sand and it'll make the repair that much better. So we're going to go ahead and get a second coat on this and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey everyone, welcome back. We are in the booth. It is actually day two. Uh, we have our polyester primer all down on all our spots we wanted to uh, address and we actually let that dry uh, overnight 
and that's the best way you can actually do it. It does dry fairly fast, but um, letting an overnight cure is, is preferable. So we came in the morning, we got it all sanded down, da would back where we are. We have everything brought to about 320, 400 grit, which is a perfect base for our application of our Autoborn sealer. But before we actually put down our Autoborn sealer, we are going to put down a little bit of epoxy primer. This is a PPG, a DPLV. Uh, epoxy primer. This is their newest epoxy primer they have. It actually has a little bit more of a filling capability than their old version, which is very skinny, very thin. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just lightly spray, address any of the edges of the panels that are bare metal, where there's exposed edges. Um, I actually prefer to knock down, if I do any kind of primer work on a panel, I actually prefer to cut right through the edge of that primer because the more you build on an edge that it becomes thicker and thicker and thicker because you have a tendency to just hit that with a scotch bright pad instead of actually sanding it down. So now you start having these big areas where it's very easy to get a chip, especially on those edges that are very vulnerable. So I cut those edges down and then I'll put on just a dust coat of this epoxy primer. And it's about a half an hour to top coat. So what we'll do is just kind of airbrush almost just the edges around the car where we have those issues that we want to address, just the little bare metal spots. We're going to let that dry for about a half an hour, come back and lightly tack over that any overspray, and then we're going to actually go right to our first step of the color coat, which is going to be our Autoborn Sealer. Our Autoborn Sealer Red is going to be the ground coat for this particular job. So I'm going to get this all tacked off and get my epoxy mixed up, and we'll see you guys when I'm ready to spray my Autoborn Sealer. So stick around. Hey guys, we're back in the booth. I have all my epoxy primer on all the bare metal spots like I talked about. It's been about an hour. Uh, we let it set up real nice and came back in lightly with a little bit of 600 and just scuffed off any of the overspray edges. Like I said, I didn't spray over the entire car. There was really no need for that. I just wanted to hit the bare metal areas. So that's good and ready to go. And now we're gonna talk about our ground coat. Now I did say that I was gonna use sealer red as the color and that's absolutely true. But uh, for those of you that have sprayed our sealers before, um, our sealer black, our sealer white, and our sealer silver are the strongest covering sealers that we have. So the red has a tendency to be a little transparent. And because we have the OEM red and gray primer spots and a little bit of the white uh, LV primer, uh, what I'm going to do is mix two to one, two parts sealer white with one part sealer red. And that's going to be my first coat and that's going to help make everything nice and even and really cover this and make it all the same color. It's going to be like a light pink color. And then once that's dry, I'll go back over one coat, one nice coat of uh, sealer red should do the trick to get me a nice even base coat. And even if I have to go another coat after that's not a big deal, it's going to be nice and even and vibrant and bright red. So I am uh, spraying in a semi-downdraft booth. That means that the air is coming in from the back and the ceiling here, moving across the car and going out to the front of the booth. So what I'm going to do is always go in the opposite direction of my airflow because I want my overspray to be falling into wet paint. So I'm going to start at the front of the car here, start on this fender, come across the hood to the front and go to the other side and work in sections and work my way back. So I always have my overspray going into wet paint. So I'm going to move from front to back the opposite of the air direction. So the air is back to front, I'm going to paint from front to back. So I'm going to use my Iwata W400 uh, LVBX uh, primer gun, sealer gun, and uh, I'm going to get it mixed up and get ready to spray. So we'll see you guys in a minute. back in the booth. Our first coat is totally dry. You guys can see what that looks like. This is the sealer white two to one with sealer red to get a nice even coverage over everything. And now I'm actually going to go back 
with what is going to be my ground coat, my, my color coat, and that is the sealer red. So one coat, this should totally be covered, look nice and even and good. Uh, we gave it about 25 minutes just to make sure it's totally cured. This is dry to the touch. We tacked it off again, and I'm using the same gun, the, uh, the LV uh, WBX. It's a 1.3 and spraying right at 20 psi. I have 10% reduction on my sealer red, so this is about as standard as it gets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first coat. We are back in the booth and uh, our sealer is all totally dry. I ended up doing two coats of sealer red just to make sure everything was nice and even and uh, covered the way we want it. And I actually just started applying the last step of this, which is going to be that effect coat. Uh, we're basically creating a tri stage with our pearl uh, radiant red and our candy blood red. Uh, and I mixed that six to one to one. So six parts 40 50, one part radiant red, and one part blood red just to create a very transparent mid coat, a tri stage. Um, to go over this, just to darken this up. You can see what I went ahead and did was I just kissed the leading edge of this bumper. You can actually see this, this is definitely redder now than the face. And it actually makes the sealer look a little bit orange. And that's what we wanted to do with this color. So what I did was just hit the front here and the top, the leading edges that get bolted up to the car. Because I'm actually gonna take this bumper off the stand and put it on the car. Now, even though we're not spraying a really concentrated candy, you're still gonna have a color change from the effect of that candy, so it's very critical that you spray everything the way it appears on the car. You want everything to be sitting on the vehicle as, as much as you can in terms of coats and orientation. I'm gonna put the headlight doors back in place. I'm gonna set them here. I already went and sprayed a little bit of that mixture on the leading edge, just not the face, but underneath, just to make sure it doesn't look orange uh, when we put the bumper on, because I'm gonna put that bumper here. I'm gonna put the headlight doors in place. I already went ahead and I actually dropped the sunroof in the hole where it goes, and I just dusted a little bit of that mix just around the edge, that jam area. It gets covered with a gasket, but at least it'll be a nice transition. Uh, but I want everything the way it sits on the car to get the color match as close as possible. I went ahead and I taped the gas door to the, where the quarter glass would be, right next to where that gas door opening is. So when I spray, my gas door is right there, I can spray it. So it's just that extra step to be consistent to make sure that everything matches up very nicely. So. We are gonna go ahead and get a couple things moved around uh, and get the car tacked off and ready to spray. And uh, we're gonna put down our effect coat. So we'll see you guys in a bit. All right guys, we are back in the booth. I got my bumper on, got my headlight doors in. Everything is, again, give it a good once over, make sure it's exactly how we want it. And, uh, and it's ready to go, so everything's gonna be nice and even. Now my approach to applying this is gonna be a little bit different than what you saw me do when I started using the Sealer Red. I still wanna work from front to back but I'm gonna actually walk the sides of the car. I wanna to try to make this as even as I can in terms of application. I'm gonna be a little bit further off the panel, more like a control coat, uh, and I'm still gonna do a 75% overlap, but I'm probably gonna be double the distance that I normally would be because we're just trying to put a medium coat of color and candy over this. So it's critical to not panel paint when you're doing that because every time I go a little beyond my fender into my door, I'm gonna have paint there, and then if I come to my door back into my fender, you're gonna have striping going on. You know, your edges of your panels will start to get darker, even at such a small concentration. That's why candy is pretty tricky to spray because you have to be really methodical with how you apply it. So the card's all tacked off, ready to go. I'm gonna start basically at the front fender here and walk my way to the back quarter and come, keep coming up until I get midway on the door, and then I'll come to the front right here, and I'll continue on just walking a nice coat of color all the way until I get to the top. I'll break it off at that sail panel on the roof and I'll come down and I'll do the hood and continue on and breaking, break off in the middle of the hood and come back down the hood and then continue walking that side. So this is what it's gonna look like.
Okay guys, we are back in the booth. Uh, this is going to be actually coat number three. Uh, I went ahead and did my second coat uh, in between takes of the camera and uh, we really like how it looks with the two. So I'm thinking one more is really gonna get it exactly where I want. It's really starting to richen up this color. It's looking really good. So three coats is gonna be the ticket. Um, again, just making sure that everything is really even and consistent. I'm gonna spray it the exact same way. Nothing has changed, uh, except this time I'm not going to actually open the doors and do the jams as I spray. I went ahead and kind of pre-jammed it with my last coat. Now the doors are taped closed so that all my panel orientation is good. I don't have a little edge that's tucked in the fender or a little open in the back and that'll definitely mess with what you're trying to do when you're spraying. Again, you want everything to be sprayed as it appears on the car. So this is going to be the last coat to wrap this up. We're going to let it dry really good and then we're going to get ready to spray some clear coat. So this is my third and last coat. Uh, one more thing I want to touch on is you saw that first coat was a medium coat. My second coat was a little bit heavier than that. It was a medium wet and now this is going to be a medium wet. I'm really not trying to really pound this on because again we're, we're spraying it as like a tri-stage not a, a candy coat so medium wet just a nice 75% overlap and uh, it's gonna get us where we want so this is coat number three Hey guys, we are back in the booth. Uh, this is going to be a little, what we're going to consider bonus footage of something that is actually a real world uh, problem. Um, we basically were on the downhill slide of this car getting it all ready to go. We actually had the car outside completely flow coated and ready to go. And uh, we did notice in the lower light that the leading edge of the hood was a little bit lighter than that front panel. This is actually the headlight door. It's harder to see now. But uh, this, I'm going to just show you guys what I'm actually going to use this for. But this, this front edge of the hood is a little bit lighter in more of a flat light condition because you don't have the bright sunlight to fool your eye that the, with the pearl that makes it actually looks matches perfectly in, in bright sun. But as the sun went down, we noticed that, again, this, this leading edge is a little bit lighter. And that could be attributed to, if you guys remember in the video, I said that you got to be really, really careful with your coats and your passes when you're spraying a candy. That's why we spray this uh, mostly together as much as we could. Uh, and the only thing I can think of is when I was doing that front panel coming up to get the edge of this hood and then coming across the panel after I came over the hood to that panel, it was just like a double coat two times with that candy. So it, it is just a little bit darker. So what we're going to do is actually just do a little bit of a blend. We're going to do a, technically a candy repair. We're not actually trying to repair something. We're just going to darken up this leading edge just a little bit. The edges of the hood to the fenders are good, but just when it comes to that nose section. So what I'm going to do is, again, just a very methodical approach to applying a little bit of a blend in the front of this hood. Uh, my candy is going to be mixed the exact same way. It's uh, six parts 4050 to one part radiant red to one part blood red candy 2 to get that, that tri-coat um, effect. So what we're going to do is get this thing all tacked off. I'm going to suit up. We're going to lay this down. And you guys can see exactly what it is I'm talking about. I'm actually just going to use this headlight cover as a reference. So when I do my coat, I'm actually going to really look and see how well that matches because this is my stopping point. I'm trying to match this because this is exactly where that color difference is. So I'm going to get this all wiped down, tacked off, get suited up, and we'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, we let the overspray blow out of here a little bit and uh, I'm actually just checking my color while this is still wet so I can get a good idea of where it is and that looks pretty close. I'm probably just going to do one more coat just, just on the front edge of this and like I said, it's just a very methodical approach. You can see I just kind of blended that out. I, I'm not trying to pound on a wet coat because we're just trying to fool your eye into seeing an even color transition. So because it's a smaller area that we're trying to cover, it's not going to look like a big blotchy spot or area where we're really trying to wet something up. It's just a little bit more candy over the top. 
So you guys can see too, um, we're talking about airflow before. I, the reason I'm facing this hood is I want my overspray to keep coming back this way. I don't want to have my overspray go over the back because it's just going to create dry spray over the back edge of that hood, which is totally fine. We don't want to create another problem from trying to fix one problem. So just keep that in mind, airflow where your overspray is moving. I'm just trying to keep it towards the front of this. So we're going to let this dry up. I'm going to give it one more coat and we'll get some clear on it. And we will see you guys when it's all done. All right, guys, we are back in the booth and we are done. We put the finishing touches on this car. We have everything that we've had in terms of paint work uh, loosely assembled. Uh, we got a little bit, of, little bit of fitment to do. Uh, like I said, we remember that hood? We did that hood blend uh, and that came out actually really well. We're really happy with the color match now. Everything looks really good and it was just that extra touch uh, just in showing you guys too that it is kind of easy to, to do that candy. Uh, you can always go a little bit darker to match, but you can't go lighter. So just keep that in mind. You can adjust to make it a little bit darker. So luckily it was easier to just darken up the hood a little bit and you can't really see. There's, there's a, no visual difference in the way that candy looks on that hood. So uh, in a couple weeks, once this car is completely assembled and, and finally dialed in, we're going to have a video. We'll do a walk around because this color looks completely different outside. It is like night and day. And that's actually one of the things the owner actually loves is the way this color looks outside. and in the dark and in shaded areas, completely different. So we'll get a video up uh, once everything's all dialed in, a little bit of polishing here and there, a little bit of dust nibs. Uh, and he also has just about everything for this car brand new. This is an 88 Porsche 944. And uh, I mean, it's got a bunch of engine work already done. The suspension is dialed in. He's got really crazy trick suspension for it. He's got a brand new set of staggered wheels. So that's going to look really cool. And like I said, he has new everything all the way to the, the hood squirters and the little gaskets that go around brand new emblems on the front of the car and the back of the car new door gaskets, new everything. So this car is going to look really, really crisp when it's all put together. And uh, we're excited to show you guys. This is our first major complete project in our new facility, our new booth here at Createx Colors. And we're really happy with how it came out. And uh, we actually have a couple more plans. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys next time.